Hello YouTube, this is Captain Ball again and I'm happy to announce that finally the Lorentz rifle from Pedersoli is here in my hands so I can test fire it for you at the shooting range. I'm pretty sure that this will be a long process as if you have ever shot a muzzle loading military rifle you know that to find the right load takes months, sometimes years. So now we'll see how much time I will need to set the load for this beautiful Lorentz rifle from Pedersoli. But before we go to the range let's check the interior and exterior of this beautiful repro. The Lawrence percussion rifle musket was adopted in 1854 by the Habsburg Empire, but this was not the sole country to adopt the 13.9mm caliber. It was the time of rivalry of Prussia and Austria to lead the Deutsches Bund that also affected the caliber of the weapons. The South German states like Hessen, Darmstadt, Württemberg, Saxony, Baden chose the Austrian caliber, while the northern states adopted the Prussian caliber. The Pedersoli Repro was a long-awaited product as not just we Europeans have a great interest in this military arm, but our American Civil War reenactor and skirmisher friends will also love this smoke pole. Just look how similar it is compared to my original rifles. I'm pretty sure that most of their parts are interchangeable also. I just love when a company pays full attention to the details. This is especially important if they start the production of a firearm intended for military shooting disciplines with strict rules. The Pedersoli 1854 Type 2 Lorenz looks and feels exactly the same as the original. Good job for sure. It is the year 1854 when the Imperial Army, the Habsburg Imperial Army, started to issue the new Lorenz rifles to the troops. When it was first issued, there were two versions of this rifle. The first one, the Type 1, used to have a block rear sight, and I happen to have one here. Check it. This rifle just have a very simple block rear sight set to 300 paces and the second one which was issued to the third line of the troops or the soldier standing in the third rank it used to have a long range sight. This was the Type 2, the 1854 model Type 2 rifles. So if you are into Civil War reenacting or NSSA shooting the rifle you are looking for is the Type 1 1854 or the Type 2 1854 Lorenz rifle. There was a third version of the infantry rifle, which was the 1862 model. This was a modernized version. It is quite easily recognizable as it has a smaller lock. It is the same lock as it you can see on the Lorenz pistols, which in fact I also have here. So this is the Lorenz pistol lock. It's a small lock. You can see the shape of the lock plate is much different. And also the main difference between the two rifles was that the, the 1862 model infantry Lorenz rifle had cast steel barrels, while the originals had only iron barrels. I started the load development in the autumn of 2017 with several bullet styles. My plan was not to replicate the original cartridge, but to find a competition grade load. The factory manufactured several types of compression bullet molds for me, so I started with the bullet shape closest to the original, sized to the land to land diameter of my bore. My loop was the same that worked well in my previous rifle muskets, mix of beeswax, tallow and synthetic engine oil. The bullet was sized to 13.89mm that goes down the bore with a little force on the ramrod. That's a 10 for the first ever shot with the Pedersoli Lorenz rifle. That is a good start. It was a good start indeed, but the game was not over yet. When Pedersoli started to work on the silver line muzzle loading military rifles with the Springfield rifle, with the Enfield rifle and also the 1857 Mauser rifle is part of this line, they set a new standard for accuracy and for the quality of reproduction. So now it, we are not just talking about whether it looks like the original rifle or not, but it exactly replicates the capabilities of the original rifles. Let me tell you one secret about this bore. It's a cold forged bore with the same rifling pitch and same groove and land numbers as the original, which means it is 2000 millimeter in one turn, which is in inches it is 1 to 78 inches 
twist rate, which is the original twist rate, is the same as the M-field twist rate, and it has four equal lengths and grooves, so it is technically the same barrel. The only difference the pedestal bore has compared to the original rifle bores, Lorenz rifle bores, is that at the breech area it has the same diameter as at the, at the, at the normal part of the barrel, or at the muzzle. The originals had a different diameter at the breech, it was a bit larger, it was 0.1 millimeter larger than at the, at the muzzle. This was thought to be necessary because uh, the powder is burning at the breech, so all the fooling, the most of the fooling is, is, uh, is generated here at the breech area of the bore, so they wanted to facilitate loading, wanted to make loading more easy and continues up to 60 shots. This is why they enlarged the bore at the breech, so when you push down the bullet in an original Lorenz rifle, you feel that at the last 20 centimeters it just it jumps down. This does not have anything to do with accuracy. So this is not a progressive death rifling, but the entire bore was larger at the breech. Another very good feature of this rifle is that the sights are pretty far from your eye. In a Springfield rifle you have the sights somewhere here, which is very very close, so it is very hard to make a sharp picture. The Enfield rifle is a bit better because it's, uh, for example, the two band Enfields, they have the, the, the rear sight a bit forward closer to the muzzle, but this one is a, is, is, a, is a fair sight as well. The only thing that I don't like, even on the original and on the pedestal repro, is that the, the, the V-notch on the rear sight is quite large. So, according to the MLAIC rules, the International Muzzle Loading Rules, you can change the size of, the, of, the, of, the, of this V-notch, so you can make it smaller, but you cannot change its shape, so you have, it must be kept as a V. So, this is what I already did. I just glued a small sheet of metal on the back of the sight, and I just remade my smaller V-shape notch to fit my eye much better. So ladies and gentlemen, how about trying this rifle at the range? Come with me. After the first trial I was convinced that this is going to be a good shooter, but unfortunately the charge was still not perfect. After a few shots the group of the compression bullets started to open up. I tried to change the quantity and quality of the loop, but nothing seems to work. The group was good for 4-5 shots, but not more. My first impression with this rifle were very very good, with putting all the three first ever shots into the 10 or nearly into the 10. But in fact I had some fooling problems, which means that the compression bullet was just not working fine with this bore, so I started to look for another bullet, other powder, other lube. I tried the original mini bullet that is supplied for the Pedersoli Moser rifles. This is a 0.547 inch diameter bullet and I tried to size it, I tried to size it to different sizes, try different loops but it turned out that the same loop that I usually use for my Enfield rifles and for my Springfield life rifle and the bullet just shot as cast, no sizing is needed, that just works fine in this Lorenz rifle as well. And in fact shooting the mini bullet is not against the authenticity of this rifle because in 1863 they began to phase out the compression bullet and change to mini bullet but in fact this process never ended because at the 1866 campaign against the Prussians we still find many compression bullets and mini bullets on the battlefields as well. The original compression bullet had a diameter of 13.7 mm and was loaded into the bore with the paper wrapping of the cartridge, saturated with the mix of beeswax and tallow. The weight of the bullet was 28 grams. The mini bullet is a bit heavier than the Lorenz bullet, weighing 33.7 grams, so it is also longer, which is usually not really healthy for slow twist barrels. But in fact, with 40 grains of 2F Swiss powder, it turned out to be a deadly accurate projectile. Ah, 
I have been struggling a lot with the right bullet and powder load. But for a military muzzle loading rifle, you need a lot of patience, a lot of patience. But let's check it. Yeah? <laughs> Starting to be good. I have only one flyer out of the group, which is a low 8. But all the other shots are well within the size of the Tendrick. So this is a good start. That's a good start. Let's fire on. Let's see how the barrel will perform, how it can handle the fooling. The Lorenz rifle played an important part in the American Civil War as well, being the third largest number rifles after the Springfield and the Enfield rifle. Let me tell you an interesting story about how these rifles were sold to the US government. This is partly connected to the Hungarian military history as well, as uh, the first 100,000 pieces were sold directly from the Arsenal in Vienna to the US government. And the person who connected the two points was a Hungarian guy. He had a small shop, a small international trade shop in Budapest, or by those time it was Buda and Pest, so the two parts of the city were uh, still separated. This is the capital city of Hungary, and this guy had a small shop in the Pest side, and his name was Laski Moritz, or Moritz Laski, or Laski, as we can pronounce it. He was a Jewish uh, tradesman in Budapest, and he was the one who connected the American side and the, uh, the, the officials in Vienna. And he was the one who, for some kind of commission, traded 100,000 Lorenz Type 2 and Type 1 rifles to the US government. The House of Monarchy was quite happy with this deal because they sold the rifles for a higher price than they paid for manufacturing the 1854 Lawrence rifles. And for the same price that they spent for manufacturing an 1854 rifles, they were able to buy new 1862 rifles. So that was a, let's say, a, a quality upgrade in the, in the army. And the gap, the margin between the selling price and the new purchase price was spent on different military style projects like supporting the, the gun cotton manufacturing in Hirtenberger or to support the, the artillery upgrade of Fort Komarom, which is a very important, very important fort in Hungary, in the northern part of Hungary. The Lorenz rifle was a beautiful muzzle loading rifle. I think from the, all the muzzle loading rifles, this is really the best one, the most advanced one. But unfortunately, in 1866, against the Prussians, it was overhung by the firepower of the breech loading needle fire Dreiser rifle. So history could not be turned back, and the muzzle loading military rifle went out of business for forever. But if you're a muzzle loading shooter, a black powder shooter like me, then you will never ever skip an opportunity to shoot a beauty like this. According to the rules of the international military rifle matches, we have to fire certain shots on the target without cleaning or wiping the bore. So a good load must work for at least 15 consecutive shots. Sometimes it's a great challenge for a rifle, but not for the Pedersoli Repro. That group, guys, is just excellent. Just check it. All these shots are within nearly the size of the 10 ring, only this is a bit out, but that's nearly 10. And only two flyers, which is just very, very good. I think I will love this Lawrence rifle. It will make a beautiful rifle for 150 meter shooting in international mass loading matches, while military rifle discipline, it's a, it's a really demanding discipline. That's for real, man. So ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching the Cap and Ball YouTube channel. If you wish to support me, then please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And you can also support me by Patreon. You can find the link under this video. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, stay cool and keep your powder dry.